Hey, my name's Ash and I'm the UX designer for Target Jobs. Today I'm going to walk you through some of the typical tasks I might do on a daily basis. So as a UX designer, you will be using design tools such as Figma, which is what I'm using today. Um, I will just run through a quick overview of what it is so to get you to grips of what's going on. So it's quite it's got quite the same typical layout as most design tools. So once you learn one, it will be easy to use others. Um, you can see at the top we've got some generic tools such as frames, moving and scaling, shapes, old handy text tool. Um, on the left we've got uh, a sidebar where you can access the different pages of the file and different layers of the designs that you're seeing in front of you. So you can see, yeah, you can see it was highlighting on the screen at different things that the elements that I'm clicking on. Um, with prototyping tools and design stuff like this, you'll also have want to create assets and local components. So you can see that's accessible from here. Various things that I've already set up that you can drag into the page and do whatever you want with. And then on the right here, we've got um, different things that you can do to the elements you're interacting with. So we've got the design aspect of this, which can deal with moving stuff around the screen, different frames, um, implementing colors and strokes. And then we also have the prototyping element of this, where it allows you to access those, those types of tools. So from here, let's have a look at the different pages we've got in this file. Um, I've created a small design library, so you can see that we've got fonts, colors, various icons, components that we've created as assets, which is what you are accessing from here. And then what we have on the design task page is the bulk of what we're going to be looking at today. So to get started, I've created some wireframes, which would be quite typical depending on the types of products that you're creating to put the ideas quickly into action. It's useful to just create really low resolution stuff like this, so that it doesn't need a UI design, but you can get those ideas into play. Um, you can start playing around with them. Um, you can see I've got some annotations so that I know what I want to do with these ideas. But you know, just a quick look, these should act as a nice guide to what we want to create in the UI and in the prototype. So overall, I've got four pages, home, search, library, and so on. On the design task page, we've got the bulk of tasks that we're going to be looking at today. I want to create some sort of music player application design so that it's got those interactive elements that can really showcase what a prototype can do with some nice UI design elements. Um, I've created some wireframes for some initial ideas that I had for this. So this is quite typical of where you might start your design process. You have ideas, you just want to quickly get it into something visual that you can start testing out. I've got some annotations just because I know what I want to do. I want to create some vertical scrolls, I want to create some horizontal scrolls. I want to fix the menu on this page so that it's always on display. And you can see that I've got some various different pages that I want to add to this. So let's have a look. Down here, I've set up some, some frames and I've set up um, lots of design assets so that we can start building this page together. So down here, you can see that I've ready some design assets for us to start putting a prototype together to mimic the ideas that I have in the wireframe. So if we look down here, we've got various assets and we've got the frame for the home. So to save me time, I haven't put, we don't need to put these together, but you can start to see how different layers add up to different elements. So that's something that you would need to do prior to this, obviously. Um, and that'd be part of your UI design as well. You might be, you might be part of. So let's jump in and have a recording. Yeah, so let's jump in and put together this home screen. What have we got first? So we've got some elements down here. Now, I know it's mobile, so I've set it up to have a mobile width and height frame. There's lots of nice frame options where you can 
get predetermined sizes. I've gone for the iPhone 11. So, um, I with these assets, you can see the different layers that are together. So you've got I create containers and groups to hold them all together, which is always handy. And I can just drag and drop these straight into the UI. So we've got a nice bit of text title there. What we got? Up? So yeah, mm, let's see. Recent songs that we've been listening to. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Next, I would like to put the new any new releases. That look good. You can see that's starting to reflect some ideas I had up here. In Figma, we've got a very sort of thing called auto layout, which I like to apply all the time to everything, which essentially creates these frames that allow you to put different paddings and restrictions on them and help group everything together more efficiently. And it reflects better what, how it's going to be built into the front end of the real product. So I've grouped that with all out. I want to put the padding so that it goes full width. So like that's the radius, we don't want that. If I click on my frame, we've got some padding options here. And I'm going to go with 16. You can see how that's changed that. Now I can place that and it's going to be full width and my content's got a nice bit of padding around it. It should adjust automatically to various different things. Very cool. Okay, so that's a good start. Um, if we start putting some of this extra stuff in, so we've got carousel here. If I put that in, oh look, it's disappeared and it's gone inside the frame. So you have various options to do with clipping content so that you can see or hide stuff it doesn't fit in the size of the screen that you're playing with. Um, in this case, I'll leave it so that we can still see the overflow so we can see what's going on. Now, I think I'm going to keep everything in this single frame so that later on I can set up a nice scroll mechanism for it. So a lot of this stuff, when you've got frame code, you can just drag and drop in as well. And then if you're unsure about what's going on, you can just kind of look in the layers panel here on the left. So I can see, let's just name this, I'm going to pull out container. And you can see I've got my carousel that just dropped in. Everything's in a nice neat order. Um, I can also adjust the gap between actually. Let's make that 32 so that it matches the 16. And let's just line that up. Cool. So carousels in, let's just see what else we got. We've got two more carousels. Cool, let's put these in with it too. So, carousel two mixes, cool. That go in, it did, didn't quite go in properly, so again, just kind of move this stuff around. Doesn't look like it's fitting properly into there, so we can just drag that or not. What's it doing? Ah, complete fail. Why is that not doing what I want? Let's just rewind. So we've got that carousel in our container. Let's put the other two in. So you could sugar just drag and drop into these frames. If you look at the layers, it helps control it a bit better. So put that in there. For some reason that, oh yeah, I know what that is. So that container is too big. I can shrink that container and still have an overflow so it sits the same as that. Let's just drag this one in. It's probably going to do the same thing now, isn't it? In fact, you don't even have to drag if you want. You can Command X to cut it. And you can paste it in over here. Sometimes that's a bit easier. You can see it on the layers panel. So it's all a bit, all a bit wonky right now. Let's just keep moving a few bits around. Okay, uh, that frame's the nice size. That frame's a nice size. That frame's not the nice size. So. Let's just have a look. Let's be, I think it'd be nice to line this stuff up. So what have we got? The width is 380. We can manually type in pixel widths. That sometimes helps my stuff there. There you go. So you can see the frame sits within that frame now. Let's do the same on the other two. 380. This one's gonna let me do it. Oh yeah, there we go. So 380. Cool, that's starting to look like something. And again, if we use this clip content thing, you can start to see how it would fit and see what's visual. 
on the real device. So obviously, then I can see the overflow. What we can also do, if we want to start seeing how that reflects to what we want to end up as a prototype, we have the option to play in the top right up here. So if you click on the screen that you want and click the play button, we get a new tab and it will start presenting prototype to us. Ta-da, cool. So this is the screen that we just put together. Very nice. Now there's no scroll on it, nothing's really happening yet, it's a bit static. So if we go back over here, any changes we make should then make changes on our prototype display. Now, I've made a few annotations up here. What did I say? I want a vertical scroll. I want a horizontal scroll of these. I want to put some fixed stuff, so I haven't put them in yet either. So let's start with the vertical scroll. Um, what you usually have to do then is go over to your prototype settings in the top right here, and you have to set your main screen frame to be the whole scrolling element. So I want that to be a vertical scroll. And then we had some ideas around these carousels having their own horizontal scroll. So if I unclip that so I can see what I'm doing, and we've got this, go back to your prototype settings, and you can just set vertical scrolling on that frame that's inside the main frame. So you can do this with anything, essentially. But this is a very useful visual example for it. So we set them up to vertical. What are we doing? Normal vertical, we're horizontal. There we go. Put that as well. There we go. So they should now do this do the left to right scroll. Let's just see how that added up in my prototype. There we go. Hello. So now it's scrolling. I'm just using the mouse. Or you can use the click and drag. You can see how that's starting to reflect how you might interact with it on the screen. Cool. That's kind of the joy of the prototype as well. You can actually see these interactions and start to feel them out to make sure that they work correctly. All right, so let's finish this page off with the rest of the elements. Um, yeah, they were all right, cool. So if I go back over here, click that content. Now, I had two other things. I had current song, menu, and I also know that in my assets, I want to try and reflect the mobile device a bit more effectively. So why I've set up in the assets panel over here, which is part of my design library. So you can see I've just kind of outlined components that I have here. Take them back to the task. I have a few bits. So I've got the status bar of the iPhone here, and I can just drag and drop these elements because these are reusable. So I could, I could drag and drop these as much as I want them put them against anything. So I'll put them in each frame. I think that sounds like a good idea. So if we just whack this in here, make sure that's aligned. And then we've got a navigation bar in there. Oh, I've got a nice other element, which is the song component. So I want these two to stick over the top of everything here so it doesn't scroll. So if I just put these in, it's going to start jumping into the containers now. It's going to be fun. I can align these. There you go, bottom of the screen. This guy's jumped inside there, so I'm just going to check in my layers where it is. So, navigation bar there, current song there. Let's just move that up so it sits back up. And then I'm going to, let's not do it by that. Let's just use that to flip them down. I'm going to use the mouse to sit him somewhere nice, maybe. There, I think that looks all right. Now, if I want these elements to stick, you have to select the element you want to stick, and then somewhere down here, fixed position while scrolling. So let's just show you how that works if I don't do it. So we go back over here. Oh, look, those nice bits of UI have come in, but oh, they, you, know, you scroll and they don't stay at the bottom of the page like a normal, like those things normally would when you're on your phone. So. We jump back over here, we make sure that we have the right thing selected, and then we fix position when scrolling. You see now that they've kind of created their own groups in this layers panel here. And now if you start scrolling, look, that stays at the top, that stays at the bottom. Very cool. Yeah, you can see the ideas coming to life now. Like, 
I, I, well, I framed it out, I kind of thought it through and out, put these elements on here. You can start demonstrating to people how it could work in real life really quickly without having to build the product itself. Um, so let's just double check some of these. So let's go like that. Oh look, it's not quite it's not quite scrolling there. So we might have to change some of these paddings just to make sure that, that works correctly. So I know it's scrolling to the bottom of this whole container. If I create an extra padding so I can, I can look at the paddings on here and select the bottom one, if I just change that to 160, it'll create a, a gap. Um, I think as well, these kind of went a bit funny, didn't they? So I'm going to move, I don't know, it's not going to work. Um, so that way, nope, let's not do that. It's because it's inside. Let's see, can all those around there, edit that out. So, um, do, 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 do. We, we have those elements working. Very cool. Oh. So after adding my, let's just go through this. So, so if I come back here and I edit the padding at the bottom to try and space the stuff up so it doesn't sit underneath this stuff, we go to our auto layout container, we can press this button to get bottom padding separate from everything else. I'll just extend that. And then if we come back here, there we go, load in. You can see it now sits that extra padding there. It's part of that container. The overlay doesn't cover the elements on the screen. So let's just clean up some of these horizontal scrolls. Maybe we might be able to make that stick and give this padding a bit of better reference. So I go into my first one. Let's just make sure. So if we sit that like that, we can make it actually go up to the right so that the padding doesn't look funny. We can fit. Oh, we've got that as a horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. It's just. Let's see what we're doing here. This guy. Let's just make sure he's not horizontal, 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 horizontal. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's just the boxes there. So let's just squidge these up to the ends so that they look better. Oh, look, they're looking much better. Now we've got this all working as expected. Great. Let's just clip that again. So home screen done. Now hopefully from all that we should be able to figure out the next two pages fairly quickly. So search page, we're going to keep the scroll, we're going to keep the fixed menu stuff. Great. So what we could do this time around with the elements we may want to keep. So we can highlight all of them and fix, copy them over into our other screen to save us having to do all that again. And then that should just work. Then what we could do here is, it's a fairly straightforward thing with scrolls. Let's just drag and drop these in for now. Search all, very cool. And let's create another auto layout. So that, make it match up with the other design that we had and align that properly. Um, okay, so we know that's working. We can set the prototype up there again so that it's got the whole vertical. We don't we don't need any horizontals on this one. I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, so I wanted to put page title and a search bar in. I don't have any assets for that. So let's just quickly add that in to match the other stuff. So. We want to be consistent with what we've got here. So let's just start outside the frame. Uh, it's a search page, so let's just call it search. So you can use your text tool here, you click, and then I'm just going to type out search for the title. Now, it doesn't quite look as big or as bold. So what you can do with the design panel open is you can 
use some of these pre-made font styles that I've applied to a library. Um, yeah, too small, let's have a look. So if you just click on that, maybe we just go up to the large bold text. There we go, that looks like it matches much better. And we can just drag that over here, slot that in. We're gonna slot in. Cool. Sitting in the center though, so let's just make sure of our way layout. You can have alignment, top right, should work best. Cool, 32, 32. Uh, I'll probably need some top padding. I think I've got away with it here. Let's, no, we'll put it in. So 16. Let's just put the top that bottom there. I'm going to need that bottom padding again, actually, aren't I? I had that problem last time, so let's just make sure that's in there. Cool. Um, and obviously, on the search page, we need a search bar. So let's just create that real quick. Um, um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to set up a quick frame because you can use a frame with a background color. Um, and I know that inside the frame, I want to use a search icon. So in our assets, I've got some icons from our library that I set up. Let's just have a quick look. Search, so I could pick that out and that could be search. Uh, let's put some more text in. Um, this is like to determine what you're going to search. So artists, help like as well. Songs or podcasts. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's just shrink that down a bit so that fits nicely. Maybe we want to change the color, so I've already determined some colors as well on the text, if you can access here. Yeah, there we go. That's a color. So on the whole frame, I want to apply auto layouts so that I can make some equal padding like I have already. Let's just go with 16. 16, nice and tight. Um, give us some rounded corners like everything else. And let's drag that in to start seeing what it looks like. So it gets a bit lost on the page and it's not quite full width. Um, I think, yep, yeah, so I've got a shadow effect set up. So you can add all sorts of stuff in here, various different options. I'm gonna go with one I pre-made so that it gives it a bit more depth on the page. And I want that to be full width. So over here, I'm just gonna do fill container and it's gonna fill to my water layout. There you go, that looks pretty smart. Um, let's just check that the scrolls apply correctly. Takes a bit of time to load, cool. Yep, so you see how this stops sticking, everything's scrolling correctly, and that's kind of fun. Cool. Amazing, so let's do the library screen as well. So this should be fairly similar to the search. Let's just do the same thing we did. Can highlight all of these if I hold down shift, copy, paste them in there. They should still keep that fixed positioning. Um, now I've got all my elements here, so let's just try something a bit different. Maybe instead this time, I'm going to create my auto layout frame. Yeah, so I can just do it outside of the other frame. Click my auto layout option. Make sure that all my paddings are what I want them to be. So let's just split this one, 16, 160 again, so we don't have that issue with this menu. I could just rename that to container. And let's drag that into our library screen and just position that like so. So I can use these again to make sure that they done properly. Looks like it's not quite wide enough. There we go. Up against the top there. Double check that I've got my scrolling setup. So they scroll on here. Remember on the vertical library screen. Lovely. So that's the library screen sorted. Um, we can again just do a quick double check. Load that in. Make sure that it looks fine on the prototype. Look at that. Easy peasy, right? Cool, so that's free screen set up. Okay, so let's do the final screen, which is the song. It's a bit different. As you can see, we don't need any of the fixed menu stuff. I don't want it to scroll. And it's got a few different elements to it. So 
One thing I know I want to keep from the other ones is this guy. So you can also hold, hold, and drag, and it duplicates. That's another little shortcut. Stick that at the top there. Oh, no, at the top. Make sure it's center. Make sure that's fixed. Is it fixed over there? Yeah, it's fixed over there. Cool. So with this guy, I think I'm just going to drag and drop everything in and see how it looks. Oh. Yeah, okay. So probably one of the controls at the bottom. Artwork in the middle. Great. And let's just group that stuff together. So you can also right click and get lots of options. I'm going to group this selection and pull it out. I think we want this to kind of frame the whole thing, don't we? So with my auto layout, I'm just going to make sure that the frame sits where I want it to start at the top. We'll just start adding some padding in. So 16. Again, I can see it's not really the content I've got. I know I want this stuff to stay this width. Maybe it's more we change the padding a bit. 24. Is that right? Is that, is that look even? Looks slightly off. It's just 25. There we go. So we think, yeah, we go, yeah. It's framed a bit better. So just to make sure everything is filling that container, we can change these options. You can see it's going to stretch these frames out that we created so let's just do that make sure it's all nice and tidy yeah you can see this one's out over here i think this guy yeah let's, let's just do it all so it's all got a nice edge that matches up now that's looking pretty good but i think the spacing is a bit off in some of these for the visual way that you can see it um so you can see some of the padding's off the spacing, I think we want to make that feel a bit more even. I can grab all of these and I can just turn this into an oil layout as well and make them feel a bit tighter. I think everything else, let's just equal that up a bit. Now you can see that I want it to all fit the screen. I think what I'm going to do in this instance is I can select this guy. I can add an auto layout for him, and I can make sure that that spacing here and here is quite even. So I can just go in here and start increasing that value until I feel comfortable with where it is. You know, 50, 60. Yeah, that's basically at the bottom, and now it's got nice even padding up and above that. Cool, very nice. So now that we've finished our final page, let's just bring these guys together so we can see them all with each other. So let's just then have to keep zooming out then and we can see everything a bit better. So great, these are all looking quite smart. I think I want to distinguish this home page slightly. So I know that I have a I can fill the background color, and I know that I've got a nice gradient over there. So there we go. Okay. Makes it stand out slightly differently. So the the main pro the main bit we want to prototype on here is the menu. So while what we want to do, let's just take a quick look. So I don't have anything in this component that's highlighting the page I'm on yet. So let's just have a quick look at that. I've set up this component so that if you click in, um, these elements are components too. So, so components can have different states, and I've set this up on the right over here so that you can have an active state. If I turn that on, you can see that has turned that green. And that's going to highlight a bit better the navigation when we start adding that movement in. So let's do that on all of these. Love job it. So now that I've made them highlight, let's actually link the page together. So if you go to the prototype settings on up here, it gives you some different options when you're interacting with the elements on the page. Quite simply, if you get to the bit you want, you can usually just drag it to something else and that will indicate where it's going when you click on it in the prototype. So you can see it's giving me some options up here. 
I want it to be very simple, where I just, you know, nice, simple transition into the next page. I think on click, we're going to navigate to that screen. Let's change it from instant. Dissolve should be a nice, there we go, like a nice fade. Leave the easing, with lots of options there. And 300, all right. Let's make that a bit quicker. Let's just go down to 150, so it's a bit nice and slick. Um, and then what we want to do is pretty much just do that with all of these elements so that it kind of just moves in between the pages. So let's just do that quickly. So um, I actually set that that wrong. I don't want that to do anything. What we do want is the search to do that. And you can see it's copied all my stuff I just configured over, so that's fine. That one goes to the library. Click on the home page, go to the home page, library to the library. Home page goes to the home page. Search goes to search. So let's just, oh, look, you can see all the elements connect themselves like a bit of a puzzle. And you have this page I started interacting with becomes like the home page of your prototype. So let's just record that prototype and you can click play. And we come back to this guy over here. Oh, it's going to reload it. see now that elements come in, still got all of our scrolling, but I can now click on these to go between the pages, very cool, very good way to try and demonstrate the feel of how a user might navigate different pages. Now one other thing we want to add is this element here, we want to, we've got that song page, we want to be able to bring that song page into the prototype. So what we can do in our prototype settings again, we can select this component because we know that we want to click on the song and that to bring the song up. In my wireframe annotations, I actually kind of said I wanted to slide in, slide out, open, close. So let's just link it up to that. And our options here, instead of dissolve, you want move in. And then we can select move in from the bottom. Yeah, you can see it's coming up. Maybe we slow that down ever so slightly, give us the default 300. Larger elements should move at a slower speed, as a general rule, feels a bit better. Um, and we should be able to just copy paste that interaction with each thing. There we go, you can see that wire straight is that. Now as well as going, as that appearing, we want it to disappear. So I know that this icon here, if I click on that, I want that to be like the close button. So I can add the interaction over here if I've got nowhere to drag it. And on click, what you want to do is close over there. And then that should just work with any page that you've opened this overlay on. So make sure I've set that up properly. I've not 100% I have. I think I was silly and I've done the wrong one. So let's just delete that. Explain that again. Just delete that. Cool, so. What we want to do is make this song screen overlay these other screens as an interaction. So to quickly add that, we can just click on that, and we know we want it to go to our song screen, to drag it over there. We don't want it to move, we want to, we don't want it to move in, we want it to, to navigate, we want it to open it as an overlay. And then that will give us the option to move it in and out like that. And all that means is that you get some extra options and it might work with some like a mode or that'd be really useful. But what it means is that I can connect all of these, so I can copy paste that interaction. You get this nice thing up here. The best thing about this is I can then add a close button. So I add an interaction from this guy here. I have the option to close the overlay. So, I don't know. yeah, there we go. So now I've got the cross button. 
that should just close whatever screen that from where the screen is open. So lots of stuff wired up here. Let's have a play, see if it's working properly. So you know these are working. I click this guy, ta-da, we just overlays like that, very cool. You can close it again. And so you can see that's now gonna work on every page. Very nice. I like that. Now I guess one final touch we can do to really make this feel more like a mobile phone touch device is if we go to our prototype and we play, go to the prototype settings over here, we get some more options. So up here you can choose a device for it to display. So I know that I was on the iPhone 11. Let's just double check my sizes, make sure I'm correct. 414896. So prototype settings device. 414896. You can see you've got a little preview here. If you want, you can, you can change the background colour. Make it a nice white. And if if you really want, you could change the model of the phone. <laughs> and then if I go back to my device. Look at that. Everything is now using the device. It looks much slicker. And you get this new cursor where you have to you can drag and drop and see how a person's finger interacts with it. There we go, there we have it. That that is prototype complete. Um, an insight into a lot of the work kind of day-to-day -day stuff you would use on this type of tool and as you can see prototyping is very effective to get across product ideas for development. Thank you very much.